for those who are, who are joining us for the, the first time, I'm Gary. I'm the rector, the minister of the group parishes of Kilray, Tamlet, O'Crilly, Upper and Lower, or the Kit group of parishes. You're very welcome this evening to our service. Welcome to this special service of celebration as we thank God for the outpouring of his Holy Spirit at Pentecost. I'm really excited this evening because not only are we reminded of this wonderful gift that God has given to empower us as Christians and as a church, but that we're also joined this evening by Bishop Ken Clark. Uh, Ken Fanta has been an encouragement to me and I was fortunate to grow up in Korean in the days when Ken was at St Patrick's and uh, Canon Woodhead was in Cologne. So Ken you're very welcome to our service and we look forward to hearing 
what God has to say to us uh, through your ministry this evening. In Acts chapter 2, we read these words. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. I wonder if you heard that correctly. God says, I will pour out my spirit on not just some, but all people. And so as we wait expectantly for God just to, to pour out his spirit upon us this evening, we're going to go into a time of worship. And my prayer is in the words of the first hymn that we're going to sing. All to Jesus I surrender. Make me saviour, holy thine. Let me feel thy Holy Spirit truly know that thou art mine. Let's worship together.
Jesus took our sin and our shame. And so we're going to turn to him as we acknowledge those times in our lives when we have backslid, when we have failed to acknowledge God's spirit at work in our lives, when we have sinned against God and against each other. Let us pray. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you, for we have denied your saving presence in our lives, and we have grieved your Holy Spirit. Come to us in the fire of your love, and set our minds on the things of the Spirit, that we may bear his fruit in love joy and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, forgive us and set us free from all our sin, empower us with his Holy Spirit to rise up and to serve him in Jesus' name. Amen. Some words from Psalm 143 and, and Psalm 51. The psalmist says, O Lord, I spread my hands out to you. I thirst for you 
like dry ground. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me in safety. You require sincerity and truth in me. Fill my mind with your wisdom. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a faithful spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation. Make me willing to obey. Amen. Gillian and Hannah are going to read for us this evening. A reading from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 to 20. Living by the Spirit's power. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and giving thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from Acts 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. We're going to continue in prayer as we sing the words of our next hymn. And as we sing those, we allow God to come by the power of his spirit to minister to us tonight. That God would break those things that need broken. That God would mould us just like the clay on a potter's wheel. That he would mould us into the people he wants us to be. That he would fill us with his spirit and that he would use us for his glory. We sing together, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Let us pray. And let us just be still in God's presence and pray that he would just pour out his Holy Spirit upon us, that we would be open to what God is calling us to as he fills us as he shapes us as he uses us for his glory we pray come Holy Spirit and Father as we gather together not physically but spiritually joined in hope and in faith we ask you to minister to our needs lord send your holy spirit to fill the hearts of your people and awaken in them the fire of your love we pray for our church leaders this evening that they will be guided in their ministry by the influence of your Holy Spirit and that the church in the power of the Holy Spirit may make the gospel understandable to people of every race, language and culture. That your Holy Spirit may unite and reconcile people and nations bringing an end to war, hatred, discrimination and the present COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for your world, 
and for the people of this world with all their needs, their questions and their longings. And so often, Lord, we struggle to understand the reason behind things like this coronavirus. And yet we know that in the midst of such events, your love is shown in acts of bravery, selflessness and compassion, which we are seeing all around us, both by our health service and those in the wider community who continue to serve our needs. We pray for all who suffer in such dreadful circumstances and for those who are tasked with providing the medical and community support and eventually in the long task of reconstruction. Loving God, we pray for all who are sick. And in a moment's silence, we name them before you. We pray for those on our prayer list. Hannah, Liz, Tom, Sammy, John, Richard, Robert, Margaret, Lauren, Annie, Beryl, Izzy, Jill, Molly, Stuart, Heather, Nell, Derek, Susan, Carol, May, Glenda, Harry and Karen. Lord, guide them and strengthen them through their illness. By the power of your spirit, Lord, we pray that you would raise them, that you would bring healing and wholeness. We pray also for those who care for the sick and those engaged in the caring profession within the community and for family members who look after loved ones and especially for children who care for parents. We thank you this evening for our NHS and frontline workers, for our essential workers and all who help to keep the fabric of our society ticking over. We thank you for those who risk their lives in dangerous situations and pray your protection upon them. We pray also this evening, Lord God, for those who are bereaved, who are going through that time in their lives when they struggle to come to terms with the loss of a loved one. And Lord God, we know that your son, Jesus Christ, wept at the grave of Lazarus. And so, Lord, you stand with us in our weeping. So, Lord, draw near to those families we remember this evening. We continue to pray for the two Smith families. We pray for Laura's family. We pray for Mabel and the Pearson family. Lord God, as you, your son Jesus Christ, walked with those disciples on the road to Emmaus and restored life and joy to them, so may he continue through your Holy Spirit to walk with those who are bereaved, that they may find comfort, strength and even joy and reason for hope in your presence. And Lord God, on this day of Pentecost, we rejoice in the wonderful gift of your Spirit and pray that you would send him once more into our hearts, our lives and into this world. Come, Holy Spirit, come in power. 
common mind. Transform our lives, our church, our community and our world. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. great privilege to hand over to a very capable Bible teacher and I know Ken has something good uh, to share with us this evening but also a challenge. Well hello it is a great great joy to be with you on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, thank you to the rector for the invitation to join with you on this very, very special day in the church year. Uh, some people call it, and there's a lot of truth in it, the birthday of the church. So happy birthday, church. Uh, the day of Pentecost or Pentecost Sunday. It used to be called Whit Sunday, um, but now more frequently uh, Pentecost Sunday. And uh, I just think that this is one of the days in the year that we must never, ever forget. And more importantly, what happened in the New Testament to those first disciples, we must never ever forget because what happened to them is what God wants for all of us. Today is an exciting day and I hope and pray in these few minutes together, we'll capture something of God's vision for the church and something of God's vision for you and for me. 
So on that first Pentecost Sunday, in many ways they were in lockdown. There wasn't a coronavirus around as far as I know, but certainly it had been a, quite a, a challenging time for many of the Christians. They'd been meeting together after the ascension of Jesus. They'd been meeting together to pray, to seek God's face. And then in that passage that we heard read from Acts chapter 2, they were all together on the day of Pentecost and suddenly there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind. They saw what seemed like tongues of fire uh, on, on their heads or in the whole room. And often the Holy Spirit is associated with fire, uh, a fire that spreads, a fire that burns things, uh, a fire in the Christian sense that gets rid of things that actually shouldn't be there and we're better far rid of. But then we read this in verse 4 of Acts chapter 2. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Wow! They were filled with the Holy Spirit. No half measures. This was a total filling. And these men and women were never the same again. The famous Puritan uh, John Owen once said this, The sin of Old Testament times was the rejection of God the Father. The sin of New Testament times was the rejection of God the Son. But the sin of our time is the rejection of God the Holy Spirit. How important is the Holy Spirit in your life and in mine and in the life of the church? Does, does Pentecost mean anything to us? After all, so many Christians, and you know Christians, and I know Christians like this, maybe some of us are feeling this way ourselves, we're kind of stuck. I remember years ago hearing a preacher refer to SSS Christians, people who were saved, satisfied, and stuck. We're kind of stuck in a swamp of, ap um, of apathy. We're kind of swimming in a sea of self-centeredness and selfishness rather than living the dynamic, exciting, momentous life which the Holy Spirit wants us to enjoy. Do you remember Jesus said to the disciples, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that's exactly what happened. The fruit of the Holy Spirit can only come when the Holy Spirit is at work in your life and in mine. There cannot be abundant Christ-likeness and the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, patience, and so on, in your life and mine, if we're not filled with the Spirit and walking with the Spirit. Sadly, too many of us get distracted and we forget that the Holy Spirit, this wonderful gift from God, gives life to the dead, strength to the weak. The Holy Spirit comforts the disturbed and sorry to say this, but disturbs the comfortable. He wants to move us on. He wants to lead us forward into new adventures with Jesus. He takes the monotonous and he turns it into the momentous so that we're never the same again. An exciting, exhilarating exercise. And could I just say, make something absolutely clear from the teaching of the Bible? The Holy Spirit is not for some special spiritual elite of Christian, not for some kind of super class of Christian or first class of Christian. No, the Holy Spirit is a gift to every single disciple of Jesus. And on the day of Pentecost, those disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then in our second reading, isn't it interesting what Paul says to the Ephesians? He says, be filled with the Spirit. Now remember, he's writing to Christians. He's writing to people who are already disciples of Jesus. He's writing to people who have left their nets and followed the carpenter from Nazareth. But he says to them, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a command to obey. Be filled and go on being filled. You see, those disciples on the day of Pentecost were filled with the Holy Spirit. But as many Christians have discovered, and one very famous Christian preacher put it this way, 
the problem with most of us is we leak. And isn't that true? That happens in my life, and I'm sure it's happened in yours. And so we need to invite the Holy Spirit to come upon us again, to fill us, to overwhelm us, so that we begin to think what Jesus thinks, so that we begin to act as Jesus would act, so that we begin to do what Jesus would do. I wonder on this Pentecost Sunday, would you consider with me, and I'm challenging myself in this question as well as challenging you, does the Holy Spirit possess me? Every Christian possesses the Holy Spirit, this wonderful gift from God, but does he possess us? Is he guiding us into all truth? Are we seeing the sin that he will expose in our lives? See it things that are wrong that we know we need to deal with and move on from? Are we living in victory? Or every day are we living in defeat? You see, the Holy Spirit gives us a strength that we never have in our own strength. He is the power of God. And you know, one of the things that has encouraged me over the years as a Christian, and I've been a Christian now for nearly 60 years, it's a long, long time. Um, wherever I've traveled in the world and preached in churches and met with Christian people, do you know what I cannot get over? The change the Holy Spirit brings about in people's lives. Prisoners really are set free. People who are struggling with addictions know a new freedom. The robbers don't steal anymore. The liars start telling the truth. Jesus Christ changes us, high In the power of his Holy Spirit, so that we can live a better way. On this Pentecost Sunday, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this has been my experience, to see transformed lives through people submitting to Jesus Christ as Lord, and being filled with his spirit and making an impact and a difference wherever they live. Sometimes you've heard and I've heard and we've maybe done it ourselves. We, we've criticised the church. And let's be honest, sometimes as Christians, we do get it wrong and we need to say sorry. For some of us men, the three most difficult words to say, particularly if we're married, the three most difficult words to say are I um, sorry. But sometimes before God, we need to do that. That's why in our Anglican tradition, the confession of sins is so important. We need to live clean lives before God. We need to deal with things that would um, obscure him from us or hinder our growth or our walk with him. So are we allowing the Holy Spirit to possess us and make a difference in our lives? I want to say this, even though we do get it wrong in the church, there is no group of people on planet Earth like the Church of Jesus Christ, honestly. I can honestly say from my own experience, I have never seen love like the love I've seen in Christian men and Christian women and Christian young people. Wherever you go in the world today where there's trouble, real need, you'll find Christians there dirtying their hands in God's service in the name of Christ. A wonderful Christian communicator is J. John. Just listen to how he dealt with the situation. He's a reverend. He's ordained a Church of England minister. And he's travelling and he meets a lady who asks him what he does. Just listen to this and let the lie, let's allow God to speak to us through this video. You'll enjoy it. People often say to me, they say, J. John, you know, what, what do you do? And it's always very difficult to know what to say. Because if I say to you that I'm a reverend, which I am, that conjures up certain images in people's minds as to what I might be. <laughs> so I like to be a little bit creative in telling people what I do. I sat next to this lady on an aeroplane at Heathrow Airport. And I said, hello. And she said, well, hello. And I said, where are you going? And she says, I'm going to Singapore. Then she said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Australia. I said, what do you do? So she told me. 
then she said, what do you do? And I said, well... <laughs> I work for a global enterprise. <laughs> She said, do you? I said, yes, I do. I said, we've got outlets in nearly every country of the world. <laughs> she said, have you? I said, yes, we have. I said, we've got hospitals and hospices and homeless shelters. I said, we do marriage work. We've got orphanages. We've got feeding programs, educational <laughs> programs. I said, we do all sorts of justice and reconciliation things. I said, basically. Basically, we look after people from birth to death <laughs> and we deal in the area of behavioural alteration. <laughs> she went, wow! <laughs> and it was so loud, her wow, loads of people turned around and looked at us. She says, what's it called? <laughs> I said, it's called the church. <laughs> Isn't it? If we are a follower of Jesus, wow. then we are part of a global Absolutely. enterprise. But not only is it global, it's intergalactic because it includes everyone that's gone before us. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't that good? Isn't it amazing the impact Christians can have? I don't think that person will ever forget meeting J. John. Wherever we go in the world, we will see Christians serving with compassion and love in the name of Jesus Christ for his sake and to help others. And how are they able to do it? They're doing it in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the reasons Paul says, be very careful then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. In these days of the virus, this principle still applies. Are we making the most of every opportunity? In the power of the Holy Spirit, are we living out lives of love, joy, peace, helping those who are so anxious, those who are lonely, those who have been bereaved, those who are heartbroken? My, oh my, the suffering that some people have gone through. And yet I know so many Christians who are ministering love in the name of Jesus, showing acts of kindness. Only today somebody spoke to me of gifts that had been left on their doorstep by some people, just to say thank you to them, to express love, and oh, did it touch those people who received it. And then Paul says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5 verse 18. Isn't it interesting, some of the phrases we have in Northern Ireland? So many. Boy, what sense of humour we have in Northern Ireland. I remember hearing of a rector in East Belfast, and he was visiting a lady one day, and she says, You know, rector, I've just been at the cherry potest. And the rector hadn't a clue what she was talking about. But he was very tactful. He didn't display his ignorance, and he continued the conversation and asked her a few questions and then what did he realize it wasn't the cherry past she'd been with she was having trouble with her feet and she'd been with the chiropodist we have a wonderful way of putting things in northern Ireland. how is it often we describe people who are drunk we say he's full she's full and when someone is totally intoxicated with alcohol be it wine or whiskey or gin or whatever it is they are full, and that takes over their behaviour. Outlandish behaviour can happen when people are drunk because they've lost control of themselves. The alcohol has taken over. They're filled with it, and it's determining, determining what they do and how they behave. And Paul is saying here, listen, there's something far better than alcohol to be filled with. It won't give you a sore head and sickness the next day. The Holy Spirit, this beautiful gift from God, we are to be filled with, overflow with, so that we live lives that are like Jesus. Lives that will really make an impact in our families, in our places of work, in our communities. 
I remember when I was a curate uh, in, in the year 1974, I was in charge of the parish where I was serving as a curate because the rector had left to go to a parish in Belfast. And during that vacancy, whilst we were waiting for the new rector to come, it was the Ulster Workers' Strike. And I remember going into Lurgan and seeing a sign in different shop windows on the door of the shop. You couldn't go in. And the sign simply said this, sorry, no power. You know, I've often thought there are Christians and that sign could be worn on our front and on our back. Sorry, no power. Now, it's a half-truth, because if we are Christians, we actually have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. But the reason the power isn't being displayed and experienced is because we're not being filled with the Holy Spirit. May I respectfully encourage you, and I challenge myself, that on this Pentecost Sunday in the year 2020, we seek afresh the Spirit of God. We ask the Lord to fill us. We repent of any sin in our life that we know, uh, uh, sin in our lives that we know is actually holding us back from growing as followers of Jesus. Let's deal with that. Say sorry. Come back to the Lord and ask Him to fill us afresh with His Holy Spirit, so that we're filled, so that we're full, and the Holy Spirit then will affect our behaviour, will affect the kind of people we are, will affect how we relate to other people. There will be a love and a joy and a peace in our lives that's been absent. The fruit of the Spirit will grow in us. And one of the wisest things I've ever heard in my life is this, the fruit of the Spirit only grows in the garden of obedience. As you and I obey God's word, so we are filled with his spirit and people see something of Jesus in us. So the word of God commands that we are filled and the work of God demands that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So let us today open ourselves afresh to the spirit of God. You know, there's that absolutely beautiful song that many Christians around the world sing, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, let's pray today for a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit on our lives. The divine kiss of life, so that we are the people God has created us to be. Let's enter into the inheritance that's ours. At conversion, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now let's be filled with the Holy Spirit. Take the wrapping paper off and enjoy the present. What a treasure we have. And then some of the things that will happen in our lives, Paul describes here. We'll speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We'll make music from our hearts to the Lord. There will be an extra bounce to the ounce. And let's be honest, some of us have a few more ounces after this lockdown lockdown so let's have extra buns and then always giving thanks to God for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ thanksgiving will become a mark of our lives <coughs> excuse me <coughs> we will live with an attitude of gratitude grateful thankful people so with this I finish on this Pentecost Sunday let us seek God afresh Say sorry for any sin that there is in our lives and ask him sincerely and with all our heart to come upon us, to fill us afresh so that we are the people he has created us and called us to be. So as this next song is sung and played, let's turn these words into a prayer actually and pray with all our heart soul, mind and strength, that the Spirit of God will fall afresh on us. Not only will it make this Pentecost Sunday extra special, other people will see the difference in your life and mine. God bless you as we seek him together. I sometimes think that Ken and J. John are, are very alike. 
in that they're both very highly excitable but very capable communicators of God's words and brilliant pastors. We're going to go into another time of worship as Timothy and Hannah continue to lead us into God's presence.
Virgin, our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is free in one. I believe in the Do you know what amazing words we've just sung there? That God would build his kingdom here. That he would heal our streets and our lands. And that he would win this nation back to himself. That he would increase in us his Holy Spirit. That we would have that fire, that passion to build a church which reaches out that seeks the hunger right oh hungry <laughs> do you know what amazing words we have just sung there that god would build his kingdom that he would heal our streets 
and our land and that he would win this nation back to himself and God will do that as his people arise as they claim the rightful place as sons and daughters of the king of kings and the lord of lords as we cry out to God to fill us with his holy spirit that we would go out and we would see the captives being released that we would see those who are hungry and thirst being met I'm not going to use that line because I can't it goes in my head you know what wonderful words we've just been saying there that God would build his kingdom you know we pray so often our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done and God has called us to take our rightful places as his sons and daughters as inheritors of the kingdom of God and we are called to build his church to be a church that is outward looking a church that is seeking to win this nation back to God a church that shows the love and the compassion of Jesus a church through which the healing power of God reaches out and touches other people that the hurt the sick the poor find peace tonight we are that church you are that church and our commission is to be filled with the holy spirit and to go and to be kingdom builders and so may the holy spirit who hovered over the waters at the very beginning of creation breathe new life into us his church may the holy spirit who overshadowed the virgin mary when jesus christ came into this world make us obedient as we would seek to serve him and may the holy spirit who fell on the disciples in tongues of fire on that first pentecost sunday set the world on fire set the church on fire with the love of the risen christ that's my prayer this evening that we would be kingdom builders and that god would empower us and work through us so let's pray for one another this evening as we pray these wonderful words of the grace that we would know that God's grace is sufficient, that we would be empowered by being in fellowship with one another, albeit at this time through social media, and that we would know the love of God. So let's pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And our commission to go, not to be a passive church, but to be an active church. A church that is wanting to make a difference in this community, which we find ourselves in Kilray, in Tamlet and in Innisrush. Go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask Timothy and Hannah just to, to sing those words again, just as our announcements come up for the following week. God bless you and thank you for joining us once more. Amen. Cups.